Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Brant with CPC Bodybuilding, the best channel in men's classic physique. Today, got a special treat for you guys. Got a preview of the Europa Pro men's classic physique division with one of the best up and coming classic physique athletes in the world, IFBB Pro from the UK, this year's Toronto Pro champion and Olympian. I got Niall Darwin. You guys may know him as Naz or One Punch Naz. Naz, how you doing? It's nice to hear a different intro from last time, you know. No <laughs> wins last time, not an Olympian. So, yeah, it's, things have changed since the last time. But, yeah, man, good. Um, ready to get into this show and, you know, look look at the names. Obviously, there's a few I know personally, and there's a few that have, like, kind of flown under the radar a little bit for me. Um, and that I'm, like, more impressed with this list than I uh, initially was. Yeah, man, lots of talented guys from, like, all over the world, which is pretty exciting here you know got some guys who are up and coming we've got some guys who've been to the olympia before and plenty of like really good pro debuts as well so uh i guess we'll go ahead and just jump into this but before we get to the lineup want to make sure you guys can find nile here on instagram so um his handle is one punch naz like i mentioned before make sure you guys uh check him out here on instagram do you want to plug any of your sponsors, give any shout outs? Um, right now, just sponsored by, I've seen my bio right there, Control Insanity. So they're like a hardcore bodybuilding brand. Um, all the clothing drops that we do are exclusive. So they'll, you know, they'll be out once they're sold out, they're sold out. So if you guys see, you know, any clothing that I promote that you like on a story or anything, you know, make sure you go and get it as quick as possible because it always sells out. Um, you can use what code one punch for a discount and they do ship worldwide, but. That's pretty much it for me, man. Other than that, you know, I'll be posting um, frequent updates on uh, on my story and on my page um, as we get closer to the Olympia. Yes, sir. Four and a half weeks <laughs> out, man. Cannot believe it's this close. It's flying, man. It's flying. Yeah. And so uh, just in case you guys are not aware, he's, he's four and a half weeks out from the Olympia in case I didn't make that clear. So uh, Niall's making his Olympia debut this year representing the uk so gonna be in vegas for the olympia so make sure you guys stay tuned on his instagram here for all of his updates leading up to the show and i'll try to give you guys some of those uh, updates as well on my page so um without further ado we'll go ahead and jump into the lineup so here's my page right here cpc bodybuilding posting physique updates posting uh, show results, as you can see here. And then we've also got lineup cards like this one here for the Europa Pro. So here's our full lineup, guys. We got uh, a guy you know very well. Yeah. Probably your brother, man. Yemi. So we got uh, Yemi at a foyer, uh, Charles Bryant, Luca Corrado, Adrian Chirinek, who actually just won the Everest Pro mm -hmm. Show last weekend. We got Jared Feather competing for the first time outside of the United States, I believe. We got Julio Gorilla from Brazil, Carol Grobler from South Africa. We got Mark James, Morisana Conte, Jordan Moore, Masiej Nabalgo, Roberto Paizana, Julian Lee Ramdari, Jesus Rodriguez, Sandra returning to the classic stage, Esteban Smith, Sebastian Thorell, and Louis Widgery. So, those are our classic physique athletes for this show. Now we'll start out with the man, the myth. We got Yemi, the man with no waist. So Naz, I feel like you're probably the most the most qualified person to to talk about Yemi, man. So like, what makes Yemi so classic and so good? Yeah, man. Honestly, you know the look is. I mean, he has a structure for a start that just can't be denied. You, know, you can see that from when he got his pro card he's put a lot of muscle on um from then and now you know now we're finally seeing it's the same with me you know we've always we've always been right there with the conditioning but i feel like you know this time he is bringing that that high level um you know olympia worthy conditioning and like i i love to see this man because it's like you know last time he did the show um, was the Empro show back in july i think um which you'll see him one and it was, you know, not a, not on a hundred percent Yemi. You know, he did jump into that show pretty much out of an off season, pretty like you know. And he he still looks great. Like, don't get me wrong, 
it's because you know because of that frame and midsection but you know he's definitely brought the legs up you can see there like the density and the conditioning and just fullness in general you know i know he's grown he's going to be heavier than um the island pro show which was his last pro show he did last year um you know the one he did with the full prep um so i'm really excited to see how he stacks up here man i do think he he's he's got to kind of be one of the favorites um, simply because you know when you define classic physique he ticks every single box you know you do have some guys it's starting to be less and less um, but you do have some guys who just fit the weight cap and that's why they're in classic but you are starting to see more at least you know winners that are classic physiques um, and you know Yemi is, is one of those that I can see him I can see him winning um, and come to the Olympia with me uh, but yeah I, I absolutely you know that's my bro we train together I've seen like the shift in i guess sort of um me like mental I, I guess not priorities but you know it's like i got to the olympia and we were talking about prepping and stuff and you can see that like how bad he wants it as well you know obviously I i'm sure every single guy that gets on the stage will you know badly want it but like i can speak on his behalf just from knowing him personally that i, I know this this prep he has had a mental shift and He's sacrificed, you know, more than he's ever sacrificed. He's not putting, um, you know, he's not like kind of put anything in the way of himself. And yeah, I'm just excited to see how this looks, man. I have never seen him this conditioned either. So looking forward to it. Yeah, likewise, man. The the photos that I've seen of him leading up to this show have been like crazy. The, the glutes are in, in case if yeah. you guys are not aware. I don't know if he's posted any of these. Like, so these shots he's he's posting are like, pretty flat for the most part yeah. like there there are certain parts of the day where you can see like all these lines like glutes are definitely in like striations are there too and i've i've never seen yemi this peel before so i think we're gonna see something different this time around. absolutely man yeah i do think i you know i have to agree i think that um when I mean, you know, I can speak for myself, like when you do, when you are in the right kind of condition and you have that structure, you know, again, he's put more muscle on as well on stage, you know, because even with how good this looks right here, like, you know, when you're on stage, you filled out, you tanned and, and the lights are on you, it looks so much better, you know, even than it does here. So I do think that's why it's, there's no one else here in this lineup with a similar structure. Um, I don't think there's anyone that can really match him structure wise. Again, it's a case of like conditioning and size for everyone else, really. Because, um, like I said, you know, this is another physique where it is just classic. Like, this is undeniable classic. Absolutely, man. So that is Yemi right there. Our next competitor is Charles Bryant making his pro debut. So, um, I believe he turned pro with the, the French natural pro qualifier last year. Crazy condition, like great muscularity too. I think he turned pro in bodybuilding. Actually, this is where he turned pro. And uh, I was really impressed with a lot of these updates that he's shown here. And, you know, he's got a lot of muscle, especially for, for a natural athlete. So I think, uh, you know, his, his pro debut is going to be one to behold for sure. So that is uh, Charles Bryant. Next up, we got Luca Corrado, one of the probably the more seasoned veterans in this lineup. Uh, he last competed at Poland last week and, you know, always brings good condition and brings good polish to his posing, has crisp lines and, uh, you know, hope to see Luca do well here. Next up, this is a guy I, I want your take on as this yeah. is Adrian Schoenick out of Poland. He won last week's everest muscle pro so you've seen this guy we got some uh some footage from backstage actually what are your thoughts on adrian man so i i had seen him um you know again a couple of weeks i think a couple of weeks before the show um from a few updates i'm super impressed with this guy he's another one of my favorites here um i mean i don't think that condition is going to be matched you know there's maybe one or two other guys that i can see with it but Again, he's another one. He's got the classic structure, you know, the arms, um, the small waist, the vacuum's great, conditioning all over. Um, and he's, you know, he's got lots of dense, grainy muscle. Uh, I do think he'll be dangerous. Um, and he is, you know, one of the guys in my top five. And yeah, I, I am super, super impressed with this guy. 
Yeah, dude, the the structure is undeniable. I mean, he's not like he's not like Yemi structure wise, but like he's he's really really good, bro. Like I, the muscularity and the conditioning um, is is definitely going to be a huge strong point for him. Yeah, absolutely, man. The, the lines are super clean too. That's one thing that really impresses me about him, and he just has great balance. And one one characteristic of classic physique that I think isn't necessarily discussed or quantified enough is proportion man it's it's about having everything match in terms of body part size and shape and this guy has that which is yeah, just you, extremely baby. classic bro so that is adrian sirenek out of poland next up we got jared feather probably one of the most influential figures in all of fitness right now actually um Jared's a, a friend of mine and, you know, really happy to see him do well at RGV Pro. So he got fifth place, which is, I believe, his highest pro placing ever, probably his best look ever. What do you think of Jared, man? Um, another one, man. I, d I didn't actually realize he was on the list um, un until I saw it. So, you know, he's going to be another guy, very, very muscular, uh, structure-wise. Again, you know, he's going to be up there. The midsection is very small, tight. This, I think this was undoubtedly his best look, um, you know, because, again, I don't know Jared personally, but it seemed like for him, the only thing really holding him back was conditioning before. Um, and it seemed like the conditioning has been upped, you know, and this, I mean, you know, realistically, he should, he should be coming in with the same, if not better condition, just because he's had more time. Um, and yeah, you know, like I said, the muscularity, um, the presentation's excellent. So he's going to be another one that I think he'll he'll definitely stand out. And um, it's just going to come down to a case of really does he, like has he brought the condition to match up with the Adrian um, and, and Yemi type of, of conditioning as well? Because from a size point, he's going to be one of the biggest guys, I think. Um, and again, you know, with the structure, he has a structure to match up with those guys. Yeah, absolutely, man. And Jared is, in terms of presentation, probably one of the best posers in this lineup too. I so I I talked to him uh, after he got off stage last week, well, two weeks ago, and he was like, "Yeah, I, I freestyled all that." I was like, yeah, I was like "Freestyle?" <laughs> I remember uh, my Toronto routine. I don't know how many times I practiced that, and that was the that was probably the most happy I've been with the routine. And I could not freestyle. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna admit it. Like for me, my routines need to be practiced. I need to learn them. So that's like you know that is a skill um, and a talent to be able to just freestyle something like that. You know, especially for classic for bodybuilding, I feel like it's not so bad. But with classic, you know, you do have that kind of pressure of it's all about the posing, right? As well as the balance. You know, posing is is almost part of like what makes it classic and to be able to come up with a routine you know what like while while the bright lights are on you and all the crowds watching it is really really impressive yeah and i think i think jared is definitely bringing a tighter package like you mentioned uh i, I want to say he said like he's probably five five pounds or going for five pounds lighter in terms yeah. of condition, I, I could be, it could either be five pounds or 5% tighter. He, he yeah. said five somewhere, but yeah, I was going to say five pounds. He'll be, he'll be healed. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think either way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. I'm, I'm super impressed with that. The only thing I really think just judging off this video is potentially the glutes and hams just need to be a little sharper, but that's always the case. You know, when you come to a European show, like, any of the guys watching that are going to do a European show. If there's one thing you need to be is peeled because, you know, you will get people from Poland, Italy, Spain, and the glutes and hamstrings just, you know, they look like they've been at them with knives. So. Yeah, absolutely, man. The Europeans do not play when it comes to condition. So that is Jared Feather. Next up, we got another contender. This is, in my opinion, one of the best young guys in classic physique right now. This is Julio Gorilla. His his name is Julio Simos, but everybody knows him as Julio Gorilla. You know the Brazilians got the crazy nicknames, yeah. right? So, uh, Naz, you were you you said you were watching Dubai actually, and uh, we got some stage shots from that show where Julio was fourth in that show. Um, what are your thoughts on some of these shots, man? So, absolutely dangerous physique. Um, you know, like I said, 
I I paid attention to no, I watched Dubai, but I didn't pay too much attention to kind of the outer lineup, which is crazy. You know, I was I was more just invested in the Brion and uh, is it Vahid? Yeah, uh, on top two. Yeah, but this guy is absolutely a threat. I think he can stand with pretty much everyone else in the lineup. You know, like he has that condition. I'm you know I'm talking about. There's not a single part of his body that you look at and think you know needs to come in a bit tighter. Again, the frame, midsection's tight. You know, legs are absolutely detailed. Got huge arms, like arms and delts, um, you know, which just kind of exaggerates that X frame um, even better. And, you know, he's one that as soon as I saw him, I was like, right, I need to change my uh, top five because, you know, he, he is going to be there. Um, I think from the rear, he's probably got the best conditioning um, and muscularity from what I've seen. Um, and I, I think that, you know, I, in terms of structure, he doesn't quite have that, um, you know, Jared or Yemi structure. Um, but I do think that he can still stand with those guys um, and, and potentially expose them in terms of conditioning and muscularity. Yeah, his detail impresses the hell out of me, man. Like, the the lines are just crazy etched in, dude. It's awesome, man. It's that, that, again, that's a, that's a thing, like, just... It almost reminds me a little bit of some of these pictures of, like, um, you know, the Michael de Bull conditioning where, like, there's lines on him that there's almost no one else in the league there's lines on. Yeah, man, that that's the thing. It's it's a and and what's crazy too is I think he's like a younger guy as well. Mm-hmm. Which blows my mind. Yeah, that was, this is, kind of detail. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous, man. Like that shot right there, the quad detail and the midsection. Like he's not carrying an ounce more of water than what he needs. You know, like the absolutely dry, full, like. I, I'm I'm really um, keen to see why like what he likes to next to the other guys. Yeah, agreed, man. So that is Julio Gorilla out of Brazil. We got a pro debut here from our next competitor. This is Carol Grobler from South Africa. He turned pro, I think, last year uh, in his home nation of South Africa. Taller guy. You can see he's peeled. Yeah, he turned pro in class D. Like the conditions like bang on man like absolutely peeled Mm -hmm. um i would say my just general critique is and and he's gonna know this and taller guys generally have a harder time filling out their frames just more muscle that's it it's it's just more size of him i mean some of the shots like that rear relaxed is a great shot it's more so i think you can see it in the side chest just some of the mass um you know through the kind of the arms need he just needs a bit more time but that's a that's a great physique um you know when you've already got when it's a pro debut and you come in in condition like that, it makes things a lot easier because, you know, there, there's, there's people who won't come in that condition um, and you can leapfrog ahead, you know, maybe you can get looked at by the judges and you know then that it's a case of all you've got to do is work on your weaknesses in the off season because you can get back into that condition with, with a bigger package. Absolutely. So that is Carol Grobler out of South Africa. Next up, we got Mark James, uh, and I will clarify that my Instagram has been glitching a little bit. So if you guys see my thing and it says I'm not following him, I am definitely following Mark. <laughs> Mark and I talk pretty frequently, actually. So um, Mark did the Poland show last week and got ninth place. Now, I haven't seen show photos because they haven't dropped yet, but that that was kind of like a, a surprise to me. I saw him in ninth. Uh, Cremo Amari was eighth place at that show. Um, just cause like, I think Mark is like criminally underrated, bro. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's another one that got his pro card naturally. Um, I guess posed with him last year. I think it was March and he's morphed. Um, you know, he did the, um, I can't remember the name of the show, the other UK show last year. Um, the one Stefan one again, <laughs> and he's, he's morphed since then, you know, the amount of density like that is on his physique conditioning looks great. Um, structurally, you know, again, it's a classic physique. Um, I, I'm not really sure, again, what the feedback would have been. You know, I'm, I'm the same as you. I haven't seen the, um, haven't seen any show videos or pictures yet. But, you know, this, this is a physique when you look at it and it's like, there's not really anything that drastically comes out as a weak point, you know. There's no, like, he missed, I mean, at least from this right here, it's not like he's missing the mark with conditioning. You know, he's, he was a little undersized before last uh, last year, but it doesn't look like it's the case now. You know, his shoulders, arms, chest, like everything just looks 
so much more dense, um, but he hasn't, you know, sacrificed conditioning for that size. Yeah, Mark's got a very complete physique, and this was by far, at least leading up to Sage, his his best look yet. Like just crazy, crazy size added, like you mentioned. The he was peeled too, like as you can see. And this was, I think, this was like two or three weeks out. Yeah, and the glutes are in. So like, I mean, and the lines are everywhere, like through yeah. the quads, the midsection is just crazy, crazy peeled. I mean, I, I'm excited to see Mark compete like in his home nation. I think, I think this will be a good show for him and yeah. people might be sleeping, but uh, you know, I think Mark could definitely make a name for himself in the, in this show for sure. Definitely. So our next competitor is Morisana Conte out of France. So he actually won the overall last year at Euro masters. Um, and I think this guy's got tremendous shape, man. Yeah. And another beautiful physique. Again, that structure, you know, tiny waist, legs to match with it. Arms are amazing. Conditioning there is, is phenomenal. You know I mean? Like the bicep peaks, the, like the deep cuts in the legs. I, I really, really like this guy's physique. Um, you know, he's very, very classic. And uh, he's another one where it's like, I'm not sure where he'll fall, but like that, I mean, that's a beautiful front relax there. That's one of those front relax that like, you can show someone that picture. I'm like, that's what classic physique is. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, if he comes anything like that, I'm assuming that, you know, like you said, these pitches are old. So I'm assuming he probably has more size now. Um, and again, it's just a case of like, if he brings that same conditioning or sharper with that structure and more mass, it's, you know, it's going to be a problem. Exactly, man. Like that, the detail on this guy is impeccable. Great structure too. And he looks like he's a big guy too. I think, mm. I think he won class B. So he is kind of like that that like nice height where he's probably not, you know, I don't want to say overlooked because he's shorter, but like he's, he's yeah. going to be able to compare well with the tall guys, but he's also mm. like, you know, able to fill out his frame. So, yeah. so Morisana Conte just, I mean, he looks fantastic. So pro debut there. And then our next competitor, this is Jordan Moore out of the United States. Uh, I believe he's making his way to, uh, London now, actually, I think his flight got pushed back a day. Um, but he looked, he looked solid too, man. Last competed at mid USA a couple years back. These are some shots from that. Definitely one of the denser guys in this lineup yeah. and going to bring good condition too. So that's Jordan Moore. Next up, we got a Polish rookie actually. So this is Masi edge Nabalgo. Um, here's some good stage shots. So he's fourth last week at Everest pro. Standing next to second place, Sebastian Thorell, and then the winner of the show, Adrian Chirinek. So, uh, what do you think of this front relax right here, bro? He's on the far left. He is huge. <laughs> I mean, the dude, he's, he's only, he's, he only 22, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and that conditioning, again, it's like, that's that trademark European conditioning. I mean, he's very, very muscular. Uh, when, I, when I went and had a, a look at his page um, yesterday, He's kind of like, he reminds me of Yosima a bit, you know, like so young, but like density and condition and also size. Like, I mean, that rear double is insane. That's, I genuinely don't know if there's anyone in the lineup that's going to have a more complete, um, you know, rear double. There's a couple of people that maybe will beat him on structure there, but like, you know, there's not much for him. When you look at that pose, there isn't really much that you can tell him to, to go and work on. You know, he's sliced every single part of him, like the lower back, the lats, the traps, and like mid back, the arms, everything that there, like that's, that's a very complete pose. Um, so I'll be interested to see, uh, you know, how he stacks up here. And obviously, you know, it's a rematch against Adrian for him. So I can imagine that he's, you know, wanting to, to at least push him harder than last time and, and potentially get that win. So I, I will be really interested to see what happens this time. I think the only thing really, um, is when we talk about like people like Jared and um, Yemi, their structure is definitely, you know, it's just a better structure. He doesn't have the smallest waist. Um, and, you know, when you've got someone like Yemi who has built up his legs um, in this off season, so he's going to emphasize the X frame even more. But like I said, this is a big guy and this is a shredded guy. So it might be that the other guys aren't actually there yet in terms of that muscularity and that development to beat him, um, which, yeah, I, he's his wild card for this weekend. Yeah, completely agree, man. So that is 
Masiej Nabalgo out of Poland. Next up, we got Roberto Martinez Paisano. So he is probably one of the, the better guys out of Spain. So this is last week um, at the Everest Pro where he took third place. And I think structurally, this guy is, is really good, man. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean that's like straight up classic shot there. You know, stood straight on, waist is small. Again, big legs, conditioning, um, balance is is crazy. The symmetry there is um, like that's straight classic symmetry. You know, every, everything there is um, you could put a mirror on one half of him and it'll look exactly the same as it does in real life. Uh, yeah, he's one of uh, I think Spain's best best classic guys as well. Um, this is the thing, man. There's a lot of guys like this where it's is good uh, and and it'll be an entertaining show. And he's another one that he has the classic structure um, a little bit more so than some of the others. And it'll just be a case of, I think really it's going to come down for these structure guys. It's just going to come down to the conditioning um, to put them ahead uh, in this lineup. Yeah, absolutely, man. So that is Roberto Paisano. Next up, we got Julian Ramdari. So, or Julian Lee Ramdari. Um, Apologies. So he was sixth at Sharu Classic. This is his posing routine from that. And, you know, just generally speaking, I think this is a guy who's really balanced. My general feedback is probably just come in a little bit sharper. Um, mm -hmm. And if he comes in sharper, then, you know, we could see him do pretty well here. But uh, sixth place at, at Sharu Classic was pretty solid because, you know, I think that's one of the bigger shows in Asia as well. So mm -hmm. that is Julian Lee Ramdari. Next up, this is Jesus Rodriguez Sendra, a 2022 Olympian. So this is a, a week out update. Um, he won the, the Hungary Pro to get to the Olympia back in 2022. He actually beat Peter Molnar in his home country, which is crazy, man. So, um, you know, Naz, since you're extremely familiar with the European circuit and everything, what do you think of Jesus? Um really really good man like super impressive i um i know he was kind of off the radar a little bit there um but you know he's a, you know, i think pretty sure he's a taller guy in this lineup um and he i mean you can tell this is a guy who's been bodybuilding for a while you know his muscularity is great uh, muscle maturity and density is is there and i think that he i mean f some of the shots i'd seen from him especially because i was looking at some of his old pictures um, you know, from 2022, if he comes in anything like that, he's he's just going to stand out in a lineup. Um, and he's going to have like, you know, when we say a dominating physique on stage, kind of like, you know, someone like um, like Dennis Wolf, you know, where he's just so tall compared to the other guys, but he does have the mass. Um, and again, he's got the right structure for classic. Uh, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, he comes correct and he, he would take another Olympia qualification. Because um, beating someone like Peter Molnar, you know, <laughs> he had a crazy physique as well. Arms, conditioning, balance. Um, so, you know, for so that's someone that you can't count out. Like, th this guy is a real deal. For sure, man. This guy is one of the most detailed guys, I think, like, on the planet right now. Mm -hmm. the, the, the lines are just so etched in, man. The muscle maturity is undeniable. And... Like like you said, man, could could snag an Olympia qualification. Yeah. I would not put it past him, and no. he's beaten some really good pros in the past. So um, the, the ultimate question is, and this has been the tale of the classic physique season thus far, is has he made enough improvements to keep up with some of these guys yeah. who are coming up? That that's I think that's why he's a, a wild card. I think nowadays you see it when – people take too long of a break, they kind of end up being left behind, um, you know? And, and I'm not saying, you know, that is the case for him, but you do have to ask that question. You know, we've seen other people who, we've got a few guys here who've already done a few shows and they've been consistently getting better. We've got guys who we've seen more recently. Um, so it's a case of like, we do have his track record, but it is in comparison to the other pros, it is an old track record. So how relevant is it, you know, going into this show? But again, it is still relevant. It always will be, you know, once you get to the Olympia, you're always really going to be in a conversation to win majority of pro shows because you've already proven you're one of the best in the world. Um, but it's just a case of, you know, has that time off 
um, been detrimental, you know, or has it not changed him at all, or has it actually improved him? Yeah, great point, man. Could not agree more. So that is Jesus Rodriguez Sendra. Next up, we got Esteban Smith. So this was before the Everest Pro last week. He got sixth place there. Structurally very good. Um, you know, haven't seen stage shots, but his condition looked like a, an all-time best too. And one of those guys who I think, just depending on what he looks like muscularity-wise, could do very well here. So that is Esteban Smith out of Spain. Next up is Sebastian Thorell. And he finished second last week at the Everest pro. So unfortunately no stage shots again from, from that show, but like second place at that show is pretty impressive, man. I, I yeah. think uh, this guy has to be considered a contender just solely based on that. Absolutely. I mean, you've got a few guys, you know, jumping in from this show. He's beat pretty much all of them from that show, you know, except one guy. Um, there's no reason why, you know, if we're saying, that guy is the favorite for this show because he, you know, he's won a week ago, two weeks ago. What's to say that, you know, he hasn't made enough improvements to, you know, switch those, those placings around this the guy is, you know, super wide frame um, with, with a lot of muscle on it. Conditioning looks like crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, it's maybe even a little bit sharper or maybe a little bit even drier, um, you know, because when you have, a short amount of time like that you don't necessarily need to really do much you know it's just kind of more of, of the same just recover from the show and then just carry on doing what you've been doing um and yeah i this is another guy who when i realized he got second i mean i was super impressed um looking at his physique and then when i realized he got second i was like okay you know he's he's gonna be um fighting for the winning spot here so that is sebastian Thoreau. And our last competitor out of the UK making his pro debut is Lewis Widgery, turned pro at the Big Man Weekend Pro Qualifier last year. So, Naz, what do you think of Lewis, man? Um, I am familiar with Lewis. So, when I got my pro card, the regional before it, he was the first bodybuilder that ever beat me. And, you know, so I'd done like four shows as an amateur. I'd won all of them, uh, three shows, sorry. And on my fourth one, when I was deciding I was going to go for my pro card, he beat me, um, and then two weeks later, we did the British finals, and obviously I managed to beat him there um, and get my pro card. And it's funny, he got his pro card exactly one year later. Um, you know, I know Lewis is a very, very aesthetic guy. You know, like the ab detail and just the shape of the abs, I think he'll probably have the best midsection um, on the stage from like a, a detail and development point of view. As far as size, I think he may be a little undersized. Uh, you know, he's, again, he's my height, so I'm not sure what he's weighing here. Um, but, you know, compared to some of the other guys, we've looked at some very, very muscular and dense guys in this lineup. Um, but again, you know, that's that's the beautiful thing about Classic. He doesn't always have to be the biggest, you know, m most muscular guy to do well. Um, you know, Lewis has a shape. Uh, and he, he has a conditioning, you know, that's how he beat me in, um, in 2022 is, is he absolutely has the conditioning. I know he's had a couple of issues, um, the last few weeks, uh, I think it was food poisoning or something like that. So it's a case of like, you know, how much, if, is that going to set him back? You know, how much is that going to affect the look? Will he be able to kind of bring, you know, something that is, I guess, not competitive in terms of you know being up there with the top guys because he you know when you look at that conditioning you look at like the obliques and stuff there's some guys that won't have that like you know we already know that it's just a case so I'm, i'll be interested to see um a pro debut from lewis he's done a few preps now but he's had to cancel them for whatever reason you know whether it's injury or personal issues so i'm really happy to see him finally finish this uh, like finally finish a prep and get on the pro stage um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm rooting for Lewis to just bring, bring an awesome look. Yeah. So that is Lewis Widgery making his pro debut. And that's our full classic week lineup, everyone.